Hey everybody, Mrs. Bianchi, we're looking at number 20. Olivia is using 160 quilt squares to make a red, yellow, and blue quilt. If 25% of the quilt squares are red and 30% are yellow, how many quilt squares are blue? All right, so we've been talking a lot about using tape diagrams in class, and if we use a tape diagram to solve this question, I think that'll be a good idea. So the bottom bar is gonna be talking about percent, and the top one will be talking about the number of quilt squares. So we'll use these words exactly and put that over here. Quilt squares. All right, when they give percents, I always like to read it again. So we have 25% of the quilt squares are red. So if we kind of approximate that, that's about, you know, it's exactly one fourth. So one fourth of this rectangle, we're going to make that red and let's label it as 25%. And we'll put R for red. And then we have 30% are yellow. So let's take a slightly bigger box and put in the 30% and put in the Y for yellow. And that means that the rest of it, which we don't know what the percent is yet, but we can easily figure that out, would be the other color, which is blue, right? Because if we read it again, it says we're using red, yellow, and blue. So this piece right here would be blue, and we have to figure out the percent. Now, how, do, how would we figure out the percent? Well, we know that the combination of these two together, if we add this, if we add 25 plus 30, what does that equal? 5 plus 0 is 5. This plus this is 5. So these two things together make up 55%. So what's left to be blue? Well, we could subtract this from this, and we would get that. So all of it is 100%. We're subtracting 55% to get the percent. So that ends up being 45%. So let's put that number in here. All right. Now, if we look at the number that they give you, Olivia is using 160 quilt squares to make a red, yellow, and blue quilt. So is this number, is it the number of red squares? Is it the number of yellow squares? Or is it the number of blue squares? Or is it something else? It's something else. It's the all of it number. So let's put that number over here. All right, let's read again what they want. How many quilt squares are blue? So they're looking for this number right here, which we can see visually that it would be less than 160, but a pretty good chunk of 160. So we have a couple ways that we can figure that out. In class, we've talked about the idea of using what we call proportional reasoning. So let me erase this so that's out of the way. And let me get rid of this. Not sure why that's there, but I'm gonna delete it. All right, so we have two different strategies here. So the strategies would include proportional reasoning or using a proportion, or we can take the idea, if we know the all of it number, which we do, we can multiply that by our favorite equivalent to get the missing part. So let's explore this option first. Now we know the all of it number, which is 160, and we can turn this percent into a decimal because remember, percent means out of 100 or divide by 100. Now, if we divide this by 100, that's the same as moving the decimal two to the left. So that would become 45 hundredths. So I can take this 160 and multiply it by 45 hundredths. And whatever answer I get, that would be the part. And I would put this number in the blue box and that would be the answer. Now, if I want to use proportional reasoning, then we would set up our proportion. And remember, we're talking about parts and wholes. And one of them has to be, one of the ratios is talking about the percent, and the other one would be talking about your quilt squares. So th this would be 45 out of 100 as a percent. And then we have to decide where do we put this number? Is it the part or is it the whole? It's the whole, so we'd put it on the bottom. All right, now we could use this as is, but it might be easier to reduce this to make it a little more user friendly. So if we reduce it, I would consider um, dividing both of these by maybe five. So if we divide this by five, that would give us nine. 
and if we divide this by 5, that would give us 20. So the next step would be to say to yourself, does 20 go into 160? Is 20 a factor of 160? And it is, and whatever that factor is, you can go ahead and multiply that with 9, and that will give you the numerator here, which would be the value that you put in this box, and that would also be the answer to how many happen to be blue. Now, if we finish up this, you just have to, I'm not going to show you the numbers, but if you add up your, your two columns of numbers, or rows rather, don't forget you got to go over one, two. So in your answer, you want to go over one, two with the decimal, and you should get the same answer doing it this way as you do doing it this way.